bow your head and close your eyes for a second. Let that be your prayer today. Lord, you could have it all. Lord, have it all. I have my family. I have my children, my marriage. Lord, my finances, my health. You can have it all, Lord. You can have my every day, my every waking moment, God. You have it all, Lord. Those watching online right now, let it be your heart's cry this week. Lord, you can have it all. Have it all, Lord. Don't have 50, 70% of me, Lord. 100%, I'm all yours, God. Father, we thank you and we worship you. We magnify for this beautiful day you've given us to come in your house and worship the King of kings and Lord of lords. Father, we thank you. We worship you. Let's give God a big shout of praise this morning as he's here. It is so good to see everybody here. Give your neighbor a high five as you make your way down to your seats. Those watching online, I want to welcome you. Thank you so much for coming out. Man, we got some special friends with us really fast. Pastor Scott and Pastor Molly is with us. Can you stand? They were our assistant pastors of the church that we came from in Fontana at the Carpenter's house. Pastor Scott, this is part of the vision and dreams. I remember those one-on-one -on -one meetings I used to have in your office. Um, when I was struggling, you got me through some times. And you were a part of your part of, you're also a part of my wedding. And um, when our church first started, um, now it's been over what, almost 18 years, um, he, Pastor Scott went into our office and he helped us really manage all of our offices. How to, how to, I didn't know nothing about computers. I didn't know nothing. And I said, man, how do, we, how do we do this? And he came in here, and he spent a few months with us helping us launch out our church. Can you get on Pastor Scott and Pastor Molly? I just, I love you guys. Then I have on the panel, what's up, Gabriel? What's up, Michael? What's hey, up, hey. Pastor Rob? We are here because we have two incredible calls yes. to action. Yes. Two things that we want to make sure every single person in the room knows about, and we're going to give them some action t steps to take today. We have two special events coming out, and not, not events. I, I, that, that is not the right word. We have some services, and we have a conference coming up that's really going to transform lives. Michael, can you talk about the first one? Because that's kind of up first. Halloween's coming up, but we got a twist on Halloween. That's right. What are we doing this, this harvest weekend? So this harvest week, so it's going to be next Sunday the 24th and then Sunday the 31st at 6 o'clock. This is two major events. We're yeah. going to be doing a brand new live drama production entitled The Pit. I'm excited. Now, we, we've been putting a few videos we out on social media. haven't been a drama in a while, really, no, since COVID. No, it's been a long time. What is The Pit about? The Pit, that name. What is that drama about? Yeah, that's a great question. So the pit is, it's not hell. The pit is the place that we are taking when our choices, our sins, our failures, our mistakes begin to stack up against us. And there's three major characters that are going to be, we're going to be seeing what happens, the consequence of sin in their life, the darkness that comes into our lives when we invite sin in. Yeah. And then, of course, the hope, the only hope is the light of the world, Jesus Christ, yes. when he comes into those moments. And How many have ever been in the pit before? I'm in a pit right now. Yeah. <laughs> we've this, all this, been decisions there. that we make, we've all we've been, all been there. there. Yeah. So the first show is going to be the 24th right. at 6 p.m. That's our grand And then, of course, on Halloween Day, the 31st, right. also at 6 p.m. And we want people to invite, yeah. invite, invite to this event. Yes, this is one of those things that, that really is going to minister the gospel in a way yeah. that nothing else can. It's yeah. going to penetrate through barriers. It's yeah. going to really be a powerful way to get some of those family and friends that you've yeah. been praying for saved. How do you guys get involved in, in bringing people? After service, we have our, our ushers back there. We're going to give you 10 flyers and door hangers. And we're going to invite our friends, invite our family. The Bible says, go out to the highways, right. go out to the byways. And just invite everyone you know so his house Should could be, be full. full. Yes. How many want God's house completely full? So I want you to grab 10. Uh, my family, I'm just going to throw it out there. We're doing 100. Wow. I got a family of five right now. So we're doing 20 each. We're going to do 100. So if you're saying, Pastor, can I do more than 10? How many think they could pass out more than 10? Okay, we got one, two, nice. three, four, five. Six. Yeah. You know, I can do 20. Yeah. Grab these and invite some friends. And invite to find really for this life tra transformation drama. Gabriel, we have the marriage conference coming up. Right, Show about yeah. the marriage conference. Real quick, where's all my married couples, engaged couples? Where you at? <laughs> woo woo! <laughs> Man, so look, we have a, a, a great time coming up, and you may have already seen some of the videos, or you may have heard about it. About it, but I want to just give you a little bit more information on our marriage conference that's coming up November 12th and 13th. 
Okay, we have 70 slots, only 70 spots left. And this is, this is one of the big things that's happening. Uh, we have Montel Jordan. So you've heard of the song, This Is How We Do It. This Some of you guys used to do stuff too, This Is How We Do It. But we don't do it like that anymore. <laughs> this but is how we do he's it. coming out. And, and, and this is what's crazy. It's not about necessarily what he used to be, but it's the, the, the transformation that God's done in his life and in his marriage wow. that has caused him to be such a successful person and, and him and his wife to speak into and impart into marriages all around the world. Wow. Right now, Montel Jordan and his wife, Kristen, they actually came out with their own book called This Is How We Do It. And also, they're one of the top speakers in the whole world on marriages. Right now, there's, right. They're, they're going to conferences, like one of the big conferences called XO Conference. XO. They're speaking there. They're speaking at the Rock San Diego. They're literally speaking wow. everywhere. And I really feel like they honestly are going to be, as we look forward, they're going to be the top speakers for marriage. And I'm just so blessed that we get to have them yeah. in this time. Awesome. Um, so we have 70 spots left. And That's what's so awesome good. is right now, you could go ahead and lock in your deposit. You don't have to pay in full right now, but you could go ahead and hey, you can lock in your out. spot for the conference. Yeah, lock in your spot. Lock we have spot. 70 slots left right now. Yeah. I mean, when you look up Montel Jordan on YouTube, you're going to just see he's been on Fox 11 News. He's been on Oprah. He's been everywhere. And he's going to come and impart into our marriages. But also, we got Pastor Marco and Pastor Lisa as Pastor well. Pastor Marco, they're going to be up speaking Friday into our marriages. Marriage yeah. Time, yeah. So it's this gonna is gonna be a great amazing. time. And we wanna make sure, so today, you're walking out of here with 10 of these door hangers at least. Right. I'm gonna start a competition between my Power 12 and Gabriel, and we're gonna do you more. You don't want that. Uh, <laughs> uh, but you, you also wanna make guys, sure. Guys, does he want that? No, it's good. <laughs> marriage, marriage, if you're married or engaged, this is your moment. Make sure you don't leave here without getting one of those 70 spots. Only yeah. 70 oh, spots 70 left, spots, yeah. it. So we're gonna introduce these videos. This Amen. is gonna tell you a little bit more about it, and these are great because you can share these yeah. on social media yeah. with your friends and Love family. God so bless you guys. Love you guys, great to see you. Marriage Advance 2021. Ready for a weekend with your spouse that will strengthen and refresh your marriage? Join the 2R1 Marriage Ministry on November 12th through 13th with three-time Grammy-nominated Montel Jordan and his wife, Christian Jordan. Hey, what's up, y'all? I'm Montel Jordan. And I'm Christian Jordan. And we can't wait. We're so excited. To get to the Way World Outreach. It is going to be an amazing time for your 2R1 marriage advance. Register yourself and your spouse today on the Way app. Right, could we all stand up? We're going to pray real quick. Are you guys ready for a word from God today? This word, this word will change your life in an amazing way if you hear it and you practice it. I think one of the most powerful principles that you'll ever learn about relationships and life, you're going to learn today. The word that I'm going to give you will change your relationships, will change your life, will change your future, will change your emotions and will change your effectiveness as a witness for Christ. God really wants us to season this world with his presence. And I wanna know, how can I do that? How can I season this world with his love, with his hope, with his healing power? How many know we serve a God that's loving and he has hope and he, and he has healing power, restoration and saving and delivering power. And he chooses to do that through believers like you and I. So let's pray. And let's get ready to hear the word of God. And we've been doing a series on relationship skills. And we're focusing on today a little bit more on verbal skills. Verbal skills. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this wonderful time that we have to study your word. And I'm asking, Lord, that this word will be planted in our hearts and produce a large harvest of transformed lives, hearts, and also it'll produce a harvest of souls being saved as a result of people having contact with us. We just thank you, Lord, that everyone that's here and is hearing, Father, through the internet, Father, YouTube or Instagram or Facebook, I thank you, Lord, that it's, this is an appointment. It's been created by you. We're supposed to be here. We're ready to lean in, take notes, 
understand, learn, apply, and then see your results. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Awesome. Let's go ahead and look at James chapter 1, verse 19. And we've been on, on this series on relationship skills. And we're using this scripture as a foundation. And it says, understand this. Anytime that we're hearing scripture, we need to make, fo we need to make sure that we're focused and we're here to understand what's being said. Truth that you don't understand will not make a difference in your life. Say, say with me, I am here to learn. Great, I'm here to learn too. Understand this, my beloved brothers and sisters. So who is he speaking to? He's speaking, number one, to brothers and sisters in the Lord. And he says this, let everyone be quick to hear, be careful and thought, be, be a careful and thoughtful listener. So skill number one, if you want to pick that up, you can look at one of our past sermons and pick that up. And skill number one is just being a listener. Skill number two, slow to speak, a speaker of carefully chosen words. And slow to anger, patient, reflective, and forgiven. So today we're going to continue talking about being slow to speak. The word slow to speak, it just means this. One who carefully chooses their words before they speak, one who does not speak with haste. Especially when we're, it's easy to just speak when we're emotional about something. It, James was actually speaking to a church that was under great pressure. They were, su they were under such great pressure, they were being persecuted. James ended up being stoned to death. We seen a, a Apostle Peter being hung upside down. Um, on a cross, and he dies. He cru he's crucified that way, upside down. We see John, John, J John, Jesus. So it's almost like Jesus, right hand person, Peter and John. John was. Uh, they, they got some hot oil, and they they. I mean, they, they got some oil and they boiled it, and and they put James in there, thinking they're going to kill him. Somehow, James survives. But this was what's happened. They were throwing Christians in lions dens. They were beating them to death. They were putting them in prisons and shackles. This was their everyday life for standing up for Christ. And under this pressure, James starts saying, and he starts speaking to Christians under pressure, and he tells them, count a joy when you fall into diverse trials and tribulations. And then he says, before you act emotionally to the hate and the anger and the pressure and the division that's coming your way, make sure you're quick to listen and just slow to speak because you don't want to be infected by the, by the people that are coming against you. That means if hate is coming against you, you got to be careful that your heart doesn't get infected with hate. When bitter people are coming against you, you got to be careful that your heart does not become bitter and affects your listening and it affects your speaking. Because when we're under pressure, the enemy wants to take over our emotions and he wants to take over our conversations. Now, the reason he wants to take over your emotions and conversations, because he understands this. When you become a mouthpiece with a mouthpiece for him, a mouth, mouthpiece of anger, a mouthpiece of bitterness, this is what's going to happen. You're going to get a harvest of that in your life. So the enemy comes against us to change our conversations. Because once he changes our conversations and he changes our message, he changes our results. So you got to be careful, even though you're a Christian, that you don't have the devil's script in your mouth. So you go slow down and let the Holy Spirit speak to you because especially when you're in a heated moment, it's so easy to just start speaking the first thing that comes to your mind. But being slow to speak gives an opportunity for two things to happen. It gives an opportunity for the Holy Spirit to speak to you. But it also gives an opportunity for the Holy Spirit to speak to her or to him. So now if I was breaking down, this down into relationships, because some of us right now, your biggest trial is a person you're married with. And to you, that's a huge trial. We're, we can't get on the same page. It's, it just seems like a never-ending argument. And, it, and I want you to get this. It takes two people to sit there and argue. But if we just slow down, instead of just speaking the first things that come out of our mouths, maybe we could hear what God is saying 
and start repeating what God is saying. And then maybe we'll give an opportunity for God to speak to them. I remember learning this lesson, not about relationships, but just about life. When we, when we began to this church and we were, the first month that we began this church, it was maybe the second month, we got kicked out of our building. This was the second month. And I remember there were some people that were against us starting the church. And how many believe every time, how many know this? Anytime you want to do something great, there's going to be a group of people talking against it. And you got to be careful that you don't focus on that group. But that, that group is so easy to listen to. I, I find myself focused on what the negative that's coming against me. It's so easy. If there's 10 people saying great things about me on Facebook, all it takes is one person to say something negative and me just focus on them. And, may, and they could almost change my whole world and perspective and rule my day. But I need to learn how to take my focus off of them and putting it back on the good, right? So now, I remember when we started this church, there were some people, uh, you know, speaking against it. A matter of fact, I had some pastors that said, it will never work. I tried it. And I, a month into ministry, we were kicked out of our first building. And I'm thinking about our one month in and we're ready to get shut down. And we have no place to go. I remember we got shut down because we were meeting in a community center and the community center was reaching out to the neighborhood and this is what they didn't like. They didn't like the crowd we were bringing in to the, their community center. Because who were we bringing into the community center? We were bringing in San Bernardino into a San Bernardino community center. It was all around them. They just didn't want them in their community center. So who was at the community center? Drug dealers, prostitutes, all the homeless. I mean, we had, we had, we had people that were committing crimes, and, but these were the people we were meeting with and we're bringing them to the community center. So what they did after two weeks of bringing this crowd in and people were getting saved and their lives are being transformed, they sent us, they sent, they sent us some notice and they said, you guys need security guards for your services because I see the people you're bringing in and you guys are bringing in the, all the crime in the city into our community center. And I go, I'm just bringing in San Bernardino. It's not my fault. This is just the people that are around us, right? So we brought them in and, and I remember the next service, it was probably the third service, we had to bring security guards. And we had, we had to rent some security guards. And it was like, we rented, we rented like 10 of them. Because they say you have to have 10 of them. So then the third service, remember, we're ministering to a lot of criminals. <laughs> and they're coming into our church service. And now the first thing they see is uniformed security guards. And they started thinking, is this whole church a fix? They're just trying to arrest us? What is this thing? You know, but I remember when those security guards were all out there, serious, they're not Christians. They're just looking at like everybody's a criminal. And it, I was surprised they didn't start patting everybody down. But it, but it was, it was a, I go, no one's going to come. But you know what happened? They kept coming. So that didn't deter people from coming. But a month later, this is what they did. They shut us down because they said we broke a city ordinance. And said, so, what was your city ordinance you broke down? What the city ordinance we broke was on Thursdays, Pastor Robert used to have a Bible study with all the homeless in the city. So you'd have a homeless Bible study with the homeless and we would use a little room in the community center. And I remember using that little room in the community center, but one Thursday, Pastor Robert goes to use that room and they said, you can't use it anymore. We filled the space with a cooking class. So Pastor Robert asked me, Robert, Pastor Marco, what do I do? I go, have the Bible study anyways. You cannot send the homeless away. Give them something to eat and have a Bible study right there in the park. Well, I found out that was breaking a city ordinance because you need to, to meet in a park with 25 or more people, you actually need a permit. So we didn't know, but that was their way to get us out of there. And I remember the next Sunday, they gave us a pink slip. And they said, you got two weeks to get out of here. And I remember at that point, I go, man, we need to use all the skill we got. And I was a salesperson, so I'm gonna start negotiating. I go, Robert, let's set up some meetings with the mayor. Let's set up a meeting with everybody. The person that's the head of 
of city, the, the city parks and recreation. Let's set up a meeting with them too. We're going to get this thing turned around. This is not fair, right? So that's what I said. So I meet up with the mayor. And you know what the mayor tells me? They're not my jurisdiction. There's nothing I could do to help you. I go, you're the mayor. Shut this thing down or open it up, right? He goes, I can't do it. They're not my jur jurisdiction. So then I go to the parks and recreation. He goes, that's parks and recreation. They do their own thing. I go, so let's talk to the head of parks and recreation. So I remember going to talk to the head of parks and recreation. And you know what they told me? We can't help you. We're the ones that shut you down. We don't want you guys here. And I remember we're one week away. So now we got one week. I meet that Sunday and I tell the church, they shut us down. And they go, why'd they shut us down? They don't like the crowd we're bringing. You're the crowd. And I remember, and so, but, but I told them this, we're not going to shut the church down. If we have to meet in a field, we're going to meet in a field. But there's one thing we're not going to do. We're not going to give up on you guys. We're here all the way, no matter what resistance we are facing. And I remember at that point, the, the homeless group and the crowd, they were like, go get them, pastor. And I remember one of the drunk guys, pastor, you just go get them. And everybody, they were doing their hallelujahs and amens in their own way. And they were like clapping, clapping, we're getting shut down. We have no answers. But you know what happened while we were being shut down? Under pressure. One of the homeless guys, first homeless guy I met, his name was Franklin. He comes up to me after service and he goes, I know Congressman Joe Baca. Me and him used to go to high school together. Well, I didn't believe him. <laughs> because homeless people always have like a long story they're telling. Like they know everybody, their name dropping. And I didn't believe him. I'll tell you why I didn't believe him. Say, Pastor, you didn't believe him. No, because he's homeless. No, no, I didn't believe him because the week before that, his, his girlfriend, she put a pillow underneath her stomach. I mean, underneath her shirt. Not underneath her stomach. That'd be a surgery, right? <laughs> underneath her shirt. And she put a pillow underneath her shirt. So and she said she was pregnant so she could get extra food in the food line. And I would have gave them extra food anyways, but she thought she could just hustle me on that one. And that was them. But we had no more answers. So I remember that we, I go, Robert, <laughs> Frank says he knows Congressman Joe Baca, and he set up a meeting with him. We have no more answers. So it was a Thursday. I go, Robert, we're going to get dressed up. We're going to go over there. I don't know if it's real. The worst case scenario, we show up to a meeting that doesn't exist. But we got nothing to lose right now. We just got kicked out. We got kicked out. I mean, I mean, we're, we're in the same boat as our whole congregation. Everybody was on probation. Everybody was in trouble, including the church. We're on probation for a whole year. The Parks and Recreation wouldn't lend us any building under Parks and Recreation. We're on probation for a whole year. See how we did. Everybody was in the same, but we're all criminals, right? And I remember, I remember we went to that meeting, and when we went to that meeting, I was kind of nervous because we have no hope. I mean, it's done. If this doesn't happen here and this is not an opportunity, we're done. And so we went in there. And as soon as we signed up, they said, who are you? I go, we're the Way World Outreach. We're a one-month church. Big old name, Way World Outreach. And he goes, oh, yeah, we got you right here. You have an appointment with Congressman Joe Baca. I go, yeah, we do. And that's what Robert Franklin does have some connection. So now when we go to that meeting, we go to that meeting, and when we get to that meeting, this is what happens. Um, they say, what do you need? And I go, we need, this is what we need. We need for you to somehow turn over the parks and recreation decision about using their building, or we need a building. And they go, okay, we're going to look for a building for you. And the meeting was, I think, five minutes. And that was it. I'll call you when we find a building. It's kind of like that, don't call me, I'll call you. Like, I, I, I don't know. But this is what happened. Within an hour period of time, they called us. And they found us a building. 
And the Parks and Recreation, they're having a hard time with us being at the community center. But this building was right in front of City Hall. We were, we were in the backyard. Now we're in the house. I go, this is crazy. And the building was bigger. And the building had a full commercial kitchen so we could actually serve more meals and hot meals and give out food. And then had a children's, an area for children. Had a, two auditoriums, 25,000 so, uh, 25, seat, I mean, uh, square foot building. And I go, Robert, that's awesome. I go, but, Robert, I know business. That building is going to at least be a dollar a square foot. That's going to be $25,000 a month. Our offerings are only $2,500 a month, and half of it comes from me. <laughs> I go, we're only $20,000 short. I go, but set up a meeting with the owner anyways. So I, I set up with the meeting, meeting with the owner anyways. And when we set up the meeting with the owner, um, he, Robert meets with him first. And he talks to him about we were on a charter church. He goes, he goes, okay, I'll do this for you. You could rent it for $4,000 a Sunday. I go, $4,000 a Sunday on a, on a five-weekend month, that's $20,000. That's still $20,000. It's 60000 on a discount, and we only use it for a couple hours on Sunday. I go, Robert, that doesn't work. And Robert goes, I know, but that's the only option we got, and we're one week away from the church being shut down. I go, okay, well, set up a, I want to meet the owner of that building. I want to meet, let me give him a, let me give him some vision. Right, so I set up a meeting, but the night before, God speaks to me. And this is what the Holy Spirit told me. He goes, when you meet up with the owner, you can't say a word. And this is what he says, I'll speak to him. You're going to be quick to listen. You're going to be slow to speak. And you're going to give me an opportunity to speak. And what God is saying, there's some people you're trying to change and you're trying to impact, but you're talking too much. And you're not letting the Holy Spirit speak to them. While you're in the argument, God said, when are you going to stop arguing? You've been arguing for 10 years and you're not letting me say a word to him. Right, so I go, you're going to, I, I, I said, Holy Spirit, you're going to speak to him? How does that work? He goes, how it works is you just shut up. <laughs> well, I'm a salesperson. I got to say something. He goes, okay, you can say hi. And I, I told Robert, I go, Rob, this is the instructions. I know it sounds crazy, but just follow the Holy Spirit lead. I'm just going to do what God told me to do. And I remember in that meeting, I, we're, re we're nervous. We're getting ready to meet with, with that owner. And, and God said, and I told Robert, you can't say a word. You can say hi. After that, we shut up. Because God said he's going to speak to him. And I remember that moment. We went in that room. And when we got in that room, I thought it would be a better setup. Someone say setup. It wasn't a better setup. He was screaming at the top of his lungs. He's a Korean gentleman. He was screaming at the top of his lungs at his architect and engineer in front of us in the same conference room. And then he tells him, and he was talking to English and Korean, and then at the end he goes, you get out! Like that, screaming in front of, and he goes, you next! I go, we next? I started talking Korean, we next! Pastor Rob, we next! So Robert sat on one side of the table. I sat on the other side of this big, long conference table. He's sitting at the head of the table. And I said, hi. Robert said, hi. And then at that point, I go, Robert, don't say nothing. The Holy Spirit said he's going to speak to him. And I remember the first part of that meeting, no one said nothing. I didn't say nothing. Robert didn't say nothing. 
He didn't say nothing. Every second felt like a whole year. No one's saying nothing. So I, for Robert, and he smiled like this. <laughs> and I just did the same thing. And we both look at, at the owner, and he, all, he had his head down, rubbing his head like this, and his head down. And he looks up at us, and we look at him. He puts his head back down. He don't say nothing. We don't say nothing. He puts his head back up and he looks at us. And we just smile. He puts his head back down. Oh, it's torture. The third time he puts his head back up, he says, God told me, if I do not bless you with building, I will not be blessed. You have building. And I told Robert, we got building. He goes, how much can you afford? And I just, I just said, 5,000 a month. He goes, okay. And I didn't think we could afford that, but I just, by faith, got to stretch a little bit. I shook his hand. He goes, move in all your stuff next week. So that Sunday we showed up, I go, we got building. And all the homeless people, yeah, Pastor, we knew you could do it. We know we are, we knew you had the faith for it. The next Sunday we're in that building. And all I'm saying is this. We need to learn how to hear from God. And we need to learn how to be quiet so God can speak to you and God can speak to other people. We're in a battle of words. Words that we're hearing from God and words that we're speaking. The only reason that worked out is because we've heard from God and we spoke exactly what God said. And when we start hearing from God and speaking exactly what God says, we're going to get the exact results that God is promising us. We need to be careful that we're not allowing the enemy to put words in our mouth that have nothing to do with his kingdom, have nothing to do with saving souls. Has nothing. See, we're really good at re regurgitating words that we're hearing on the news, that we're hearing from people, that we're, that we're feeling. We're really good. I feel this. My opinion is this. And all these things, if you don't watch it, are destroying your future. So why do we need to be slow to speak? Number one. Our words can destroy or bless others. If we're not careful, we can hurt people by being careless with our words. Our words have great power to cause major damage or create major blessing. Until we learn how to be slow to speak, we'll continue to harm others instead of blessing them. Our goal is not to hurt others, but to love them and save them. The enemy wins when believers have the wrong message in their mouths. The only hope for this godless and evil world is believers full of the life-given message of Jesus Christ. So the words, let's talk about words. The words of the godless, say with me, godless. Um, what does godless mean? People that don't have God. These are the words of the godless. It says this, the words of the godless destroy others. And, and Proverbs 11, 9 says this, with his mouth, the godless man would destroy his neighbor, but by knowledge the righteous are delivered. The godless man, or when we're acting ungodly, our mouths destroy others. And I want you to think about this. Is your, that's why we have to be careful, slow to speak, because are the words that I'm speaking destroying the people I should be building? The word destroy means to injure. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never 
hurt me. It's the biggest fantasy lie you'll ever hear. And we're learning this when we're children, that words don't hurt. But the greatest pain I've ever gotten was not being punched in the face. The biggest pain I've ever experienced was through the mouth of someone that was close to me. Their words injured me. Some of us have not recovered from words that were spoken over you when you were a little boy, a little girl, or maybe in a bad marriage. These words are still affecting you today. They were abusive. They were destructive. They brought ruin. The words of the godless also corrupt. Say it with me, corrupt. So they ruin, they batter, they, they hurt, they injure, and they also corrupt. Have you ever been in a conversation with someone and your heart left corrupted? That means maybe they were talking about someone and now you dislike that person because of the words that you received. Or maybe you entered that conversation and you left with wrong, lustful desires in your heart because their words were destructive. Godless, the godless use words to destroy. And isn't it crazy that the devil has people constantly cursing each other for fun. I've never had anybody tell me, Marco, you don't curse enough. Like you need a little more F words in your conversation because you're not cool. But how many people, even in the church, when you leave here, you're trying to be cool. So you throw in a, a few extra F words or a few marginal words to try to act cool at the job. And you know what's happening? While you're saying these words, these words are seeds. These words either are destroying or they're blessing. But you cannot say a curse word without releasing cursing in your life and in their life. You guys get that? The mouth of a godless man will, do, will destroy his what? Neighbor. I love this. The words of a God, of a God, of the godly bless others. The words of the godly what? So we bless others. Say with, say with me. We, what do we use our mouth for? We use our mouth to bless people. You use your mouth to bless your wife. You use your mouth to bless your job. You use your mouth to bless your circumstance. You use your mouth to bless your husband. You use your mouth to bless your kids. You use your mouth to bless your neighbors. You use your mouth to bless your enemies. You just use your mouth for one purpose. My mouth is used to bless. My mouth is used to what? Look at Proverbs 10, 11. The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life. And his words of wisdom are a source of blessing. So the mouth of a righteous person is a source of blessing. A source of what? Source of what? Now, if your mouth is a source of life and blessing, that means there should be a high demand for you. Because if someone is going to get the blessings and the life that God gives, they're going to have to come to a source. You're not a source of a curse. You're not the source of the complaining. You're not the source of judgment. You're not the source of criticism. You're not the source of accusation. You're not the source of being opinionated. You are the source of blessings. You are the source of life. And what God is saying, every believer should be in demand. Because if people want to experience blessing, they got to come to a righteous man and woman of God. 
Your mouth has the power to change your life. Your mouth has the power to save them. Your mouth has the power to deliver them. Your mouth has the power to prosper them. Come on. This world needs full, a whole bunch of believers that are full of the word of God and blessings in their mouth. The word life means is a fountain of life. The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of what? It means refreshing. Revival. People are like, we're dead, ready to give up. After you're done speaking with them, you're full of life again. Thank you for speaking to me. I was ready to commit suicide. I was ready to throw in the towel. But after speaking with you, I got a new perspective. I realized that God loves me. He has a plan for my life. And I might have messed up, but he'll forgive me. And I need to learn how to forgive myself. I'm not giving up. I'm moving towards my future. I'm not giving up on my marriage. I'm going to start working on this thing. I'm not giving up on church. I'm going to start sticking it out and get get grounded in the house of God so I can begin to flourish. I'm not giving up. I feel, I'm I feel like I'm alive again. I love it. The word life means fruitfulness, rejoicing, green veg vegetation, springtime, green vegetation, springtime. Have you ever, ever spoken to a plant? This is what you got to do. I want you to practice this at home. If you got a plant that's dying, start speaking life over it. You're not dying. You're going to live. <laughs> and then put some water on it, on top of it. But this is what happens. Whatever you speak life over, you water. And whatever you water turns into green vegetation. You know what this, the Bible is saying here? You can actually, through your mouth, change a season. You could turn winter into spring when you start speaking spring. Do you know why some of us are still in winter longer than we should? Because all you're doing is talking about the season you're in. You're not talking about the seas in your head. You're talking about your limitations. You're talking about your failures. You're talking about who's against you. You're talking about what's wrong. As a matter of fact, you've gotten so good at it, you can't even say thank you anymore. It's gotten to the point that you can't see good in your life. Do you know one of the things that I do in a counseling session? If you came to me for counseling, this is what I would do. I would start off the counseling session with this. Tell me what's good, what, what good things are happening in your life right now. And do you know most couples, they'll sit there for a long period of time and they can't figure out one thing that's good? I go, and until you guys can figure out one thing that's good, I'm not starting this counseling session because your mind is too negative to receive the blessings I'm going to give you. We got to change the season in your mind. Come on, you guys get this? I'm keeping this slow because I, I got a lot to teach on this. So the words of the godly bless others. The words of the godly what? The words of the godly what? Say this, I'm godly. I bless others. Where I go, people become fruitful. They become prosperous. They become free. They get delivered. Things begin to change for the good, because I'm a source of blessing. Could it be you're waiting for someone to rescue you and God says, why don't you rescue yourself and change the way you're talking? My marriage is bad. My kids are, my kids are bad. My kids, but, uh, this season is for them. My kids like Freddy Krueger. He's like the devil. I don't have enough money. I, I never have been. I guess it's just the way it's going to be. I just feel like quitting. Have you ever felt like quitting and giving up? And, then you, and you know what the worst thing about it? You start hanging around people that are in the same season as you because you're comfortable wearing that jacket in the cold. Are you cold? Yeah, I'm cold. But why don't you speak to somebody that's in springtime and they show up, they show up with their shorts on, excited. Oh my God, can you smell the flowers? I don't see no flowers. 
We're getting ready right now for a harvest. Things are getting good right now. Everything that was dead is coming back to life. I am so excited. Why don't you hang around somebody that's in a different season and hear them and watch them bless you and watch hearing them talk about the season that they're in. It's going to help you get out of your season. Their words will be a blessing. Somebody sit with me. Look at this. So now, I'm going to give you, this is it. I'm going to give you three ways that the words of a believer bless people. Number one, the words of a believer bless them with faith to believe in Christ and receive, receive eternal life. The only way someone will ever believe in Jesus as Lord and Savior is by hearing a believer share their faith in Christ. Someone's eternal life is dependent on our next conversation. Our complaining, cursing, outbursts of anger, opinions, perverted jokes, judging, flirting, relig religious jargon and Christian Christianese, conspiracy theories, fears, Worries will not save anybody. All of, I want you to think about this. What are you talking about? If the devil was looking to persecute someone for talking about Jesus, would he have to skip by you? Well, I'm a Christian. I know, but you don't talk about Christ. I know, but I talk a lot of good things. I know, but you don't talk about Christ. How can someone get saved if you don't have a testimony in your mouth? How can someone get to church if you never invite them? Share your testimony. I was a drug addict. Stop trying to make it seem all right. You were jacked up. You're not self-made. You were God-made. Because until Jesus came into your life, you were bound. You were depressed. You were hopeless. Your family was falling apart. Your marriage was falling apart. You had no hope. You had no way to get out. But there was somebody that told you about Jesus. And they told you what he did for me, he could do for you. And that word built your faith to receive your salvation. Look at this, Acts 14.1. Now at Iconinium, I don't even know how to say that. It don't matter. That's not the most important part. <laughs> they entered together into the Jewish synagogue and spoke in such a way that great, a great number of both Jews and Greeks believed. They spoke. And then people believed. They spoke and then people what? They spoke and then people. Do you remember when you were out there in the world? You used to talk about your worldly stuff. When you were really into drinking, and some of us are still into drinking. You cannot be really into drinking without speaking drinkingese. It's a language. Now, are they going to have any? Are they going to have anything there? Well, yeah, they're going to have a keg. Okay, I'll be there then. I'll skip there. When you were into weed, it was a religion for you. You used to tattoo it on yourself. You'd get the hat with the leaf on it. That's what I'm about. You have a shirt, and then you love talking about your last high. And then after that, it was so funny, man. It was crazy. It was it's a trip, man. After that, we just got some munchies, and we went to 7-Eleven, and we just got all the ding dogs. <laughs> oh, my, man, that was some good stuff, man. It just calms me. I need it. Because when you're about something, we know you're about it. We know what's in our hearts, what's coming out of our mouths. 
And all I'm saying, if that stuff's been in our heart before, why don't we go ahead and let go of that and let's let Christ dominate our hearts and let's start sharing Christ with others because as we're sharing Christ with others, we give an opportunity for someone to have faith and believe. So they believe. Number two, how do we bless, how do we bless others with our mouth? We bless them with healing. Proverbs 12, 17. Look what, no, Proverbs 16, 24. I'm going to read that one. Proverbs 16, 24. Nothing is more appealing than speaking beautiful, life-giving words. For they release sweetness to our souls and inner healing to our spirits. Another, another version says, and Proverbs 16, 24, and NIRV says this, kind words are like honey. They are sweet to the spirit and bring healing to the body. What? You could speak and God could actually heal a soul, a mind, and a body through your work. You know how Jesus healed people many times? He just say this, be healed. And they were healed. When was the, I'm going to get this. When you start speaking healing, you start receiving healing. I'm going to give you a pattern. Look at this. This is a pattern. We're smart. Look at this. We're real smart. We got this. Speak life and you get life. Speak healing and you get healing. Speak words of encouragement and you'll be encouraged. Speak freedom and you're going to get freedom. Speak light and then there was light. Speak the gospel and people will be saved. Can you see the pattern? What you speak, you'll experience. Healing. I remember talking to some lady that she had asthma. She had diabetes. She had high blood pressure. And it was so bad that she was on a, a, on a breathing machine for a whole year. She'd walk around with a tank. And I remember she's getting to the point, she can't breathe so bad, she's calling an ambulance. I was, at that time, I was working at the car dealership, and she goes, Pastor Marco, can you please, before, before the ambulance get here, can you come and pray for me? Because I think I need prayer. Well, I'll, I'll do my best to get there. The ambulance got there before I did. And the ambulance... So you're do really, really bad. We got to take you in the ambulance now. She goes, I can't. My pastor's coming. And what she was saying, I have more hope in what he's going to tell me than what you're going to tell me. And what she was saying, my source of healing, my source of breakthrough. I'm not the source. God's the source, but he just works through us. Come on. He works through us. Thank God. Thank God that the Holy Spirit's in us and we could do this. And I remember she said, I sent the ambulance away. And I, at that point, I just felt all kinds of pressure. I go, oh my gosh, we got a healer now. Like the Holy Spirit says, I, you ain't healing nobody. I'm healing. You're just going to show up and speak what I tell you to speak, and we'll be fine. And I remember I talked to her for a few minutes, and I'm ready to lay hands on her and pray for her, just like the Scripture said, we lay hands on the sick and to recover. And when I'm ready to lay hands on her, the Holy Spirit says, said, don't touch her. She can't be healed yet. I go, why? She goes, she has bitterness and unforgiveness in her heart. And unless she forgives them, I can't heal her. So I told her, I go, okay, okay. okay. I, go, I go, who do you need to forgive? That's what I said next. And she goes, I got to forgive everybody. She started crying. And she started naming them one after the other. And after she was not done naming them, I laid hands on her. And when I laid hands on her, this is what happens. A demon started speaking through her. And I go, and he started speaking. Rah, rah, and I go, who are you? He goes, emphysema. Come out. And it came out. Another demon. Who, and I, who are you? High blood pressure. Come out. And it came out. She had like four diseases that were actually turned into demons. I cast every one of them out. She got off her breathing machine 
She started jumping and she was healed. Only, I'll tell you this, only because in the mouth of a believer is healing. In the mouth of a believer is the power of God. In the mouth of the believer, come on, it's faith to believe so someone can have eternal life. It's time to use our mouths to bless people. How many are ready to do that? But before we do that, we got to do some repenting. You know why we got to repent? We're talking too much nonsense and not enough words. We're talking about what's going wrong instead of giving God an opportunity to start working on some stuff to make it right. I know you have a problem, but God's bigger than your problem. And I know your problem is probably a relationship, but God's the only way that can change that heart. But when you give God something, something to work with, give him a little something, something to work with, start speaking life. The other day, um, I'm learning some tips. Someone say tips. I'm going to end it with this, but I, I got a, a tip that I learned is don't, don't use you statements, use I statements. Don't use you statements. You statements are accusatory, and what they do is cause people to defend themselves. So like you always, you never, you're, you're like this, you're like that. And I started finding out when I'm talking to Lisa, I was using a lot of you statements. Like, you don't cook enough. Right? You don't listen. So and then I started like, okay, you can't use you statements. Then I started running, well, how do you use I statements? Like, I didn't even know how to talk. And then I realized I'd say something like this. Let's sit together and let's come up with a cooking schedule. And I'll help you and we'll get the girls on a cooking schedule and we could do it together. And she goes, okay, let's do that. Oh, that was easy. <laughs> but we got to practice this stuff. Because, you know, if you don't like the way your life is, you know what the problem is? You're saying the wrong words. And you are a byproduct of the words that you speak. If you want your life to start changing, start changing your vocabulary. Maybe we need to start speaking less and start using chosen words so we can start getting God's chosen results. Let's all stand up. You guys are awesome. Pastor Robert, can you come up here and close this out, please? How many received something from God today? Praise the Lord. God is good. Now, I want you to do, guys, invite some. I'm going to dismiss just a second, but invite someone to church. We got business cards out there. We got flyers. We got door hangers. Use all that to save a soul. And do you know, maybe it's just this. We come to church with me, on, on the 24th, there's a drama. Or on the 31st, Halloween, we're going to have, we're gonna have, we're gonna have a harvest festival at the church. And we're going to have endless candy for the kids. A matter of fact, they cannot trick or treat enough to get the candy they're going to get here. So we're going to have a whole program for the kids. The whole children's ministry is going to turn into a whole harvest festival. The kids are going to get so much candy, they're going to have to start a business to sell it. We're going to turn them entrepreneurs here, selling candy. But it's going to be awesome here. So bring them to the house of God. But before we leave, we want to give an opportunity for you to receive the greatest gift you could ever receive. And that's the gift of new life, eternal life. Let God forgive you, set you free, give you a new life, change your heart, and make you into a new person. It can happen right now. You're one decision away. You're one confession away from your whole life being changed forever. So wasn't that a great word to give Pastor Mark a round of applause? And we're going to end right now with prayer. I'm going to call this right now 60 seconds into eternity right now. 60 seconds. 60 seconds right now to give your life over to Jesus. Because here's the biggest question anybody could ever ask you here in these 60 seconds. If you were to die today, 
where will you spend eternity? Have you given your life to God? Susie, our kids rolled past her. Her family just went through a, a tragedy this week. Her cousin got in a car accident. Her cousin was driving. Three kids in the car. Two of the kids passed away. A one-year-old and a 16-year-old. Tragic news. So, Pastor, why are you sharing that? It just shows me again how short life is. They were just driving. I think another guy was on his phone or texting or something. Now this guy's going to prison. He's going to prison for many years. Two counts, involuntary manslaughter. How quick your life could change in seconds. Have you given your life to Jesus yet? Have you asked forgiveness of your sins? When we die, there's two locations that we can go to. Heaven and then there's hell. There's not a third location. When we die, the Bible is very clear. We could go to heaven or we could go to hell. Pastor, how do we go to heaven? Very simple. We put our faith in Jesus. It's not about a church. It's not about a religion. You can't stand before God one day and if God said this, why should I let you into heaven? You can't say this. Well, I'm a Pentecostal. I'm a Baptist. There's no such scripture in the Bible. It's not about a religion. It's about a relationship with Jesus. So here it goes. Life is not guaranteed tomorrow. And with this accident that I just seen this week, life's not guaranteed the next half hour. The Bible says we're like vapor. We're here for one second. And we're gone the next. So here it goes. If you say, Pastor, I want Jesus. I want to be forgiven of my sins. I want to make sure if I die today, man, I'd go straight to heaven. I need to get right with God. I want, I want to make him the Lord of my life. I need help right now. I need God. That's me. On the count of three, raise your hands all across this auditorium. You're watching us online. You can join us right there at your workplace. You're there at home right now. You're in a hospital room right now. Join us. On the count of three, if you said, I want Jesus. I want to go to heaven. I want to get right with God. That's me. On the count of three, raise your hands. One, two, three. Raise your hands right now. Raise them, raise them, raise them. I see a hand over there. I see a hand over here. I think I see a hand right there. I see a couple hands in the back. I see a hand right there. I think I see a hand right there. All those who just raised your hands, I want you to come forward. Come meet me here down the front, and we're going to lead you right now in a prayer to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you just raise your hands, come on down. Come, 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 come. Come, come. Even if you didn't raise your hands, say, come, I need God. I need God. Come, 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 come. This is your day. Yes, yes, yes. Come, come, come. Come, come. I see a few hands over here. Come. I see a few hands over here. There you go. Come, come. Come, 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 come. Yes, yes, come. Come, come. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. There it goes. Come. So proud of you. We got one. We got two. We got three, we got four, we got five, we got six, we got seven, we got eight, we got nine, we got ten, we got eleven, we got twelve people giving our life to Jesus right now. If everyone could bow their head and close their eyes. Now for the ones you at your seat, and you're thinking, man, I should have went down there. It's okay. You can say this prayer right where you're at in your seat. God's going to save you right there. But after service, let one of us know. I want to pray with you and help you with your walk with Christ. Because your very next step is starting at the way. What is the next step? Starting at the way. That's our classes here. So every head by every eyes closed. You're watching online right now. Say this prayer and you'll be saved right now. Say, Jesus, I ask forgiveness of all my sins. Jesus, come into my heart. Become my Lord and Savior. I repent of all the wrong that I've done. Holy Spirit, fill me. Set me free, God, from all my bad habits, all my addictions. Today, I choose to follow you. Thank you, Father, for sending your son Jesus 
to die on a cross for me. I am saved. I am born again. I'm on my way to heaven. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Give all those a round of applause. Those that said that prayer, go to igotsaved.com. igotsaved.com will help you with your walk with Christ. If anybody needs prayer, come on down. We'd love to pray with you guys. You guys don't forget, October 24th, the first showing of the drama, The Pit, 24th and the 31st.